Hi everyone, Kristen DeFrancisco, Assistant Superintendent from Groton Dunstable. And I'm coming out to you today with a vlog about engagement and motivation. Engagement and motivation is something we've certainly been talking about even more at the beginning of this school year as we're thinking about learners at home and we're thinking about learners at school and how do we help all of our learners to stay engaged and motivated. And so as we talk about this with educators at school, it is also becoming apparent that grown-ups and parents at home are more and more involved in this process than they've even been in the past. Um, and we also recognize and know that something coming from a teacher and something coming from a grown-up at home can, can be received in two totally different ways. I know in my own personal experience, I've leaned on teachers uh, in my children's, my two daughters' lives quite a bit to deliver messages that they may not be accepting or taking from me. And I'm certainly experiencing that now with a, with a daughter getting ready to go to college next year. So hopefully some of these will be some tips and some reminders even maybe of things that you already currently do and you might need a refresh about. So I'm gonna present our slide deck here today and talk a little bit about each of the things that we will be taking a look at. So what, what does engagement and motivation look like? That, be, that will be one question that we talk about and answer. How do we figure out if a student is motivated or engaged is another. How do we help students to be motivated and engaged? And then finally, can any of these things work outside of school when we want our children to be motivated and engaged in other areas? So we'll move through each one of those questions and I'll talk a little bit about both what you might see at school and what you might see at home for engagement and motivation. Um, and, and, and I will, before I leave the slide, say that engagement and motivation is really a big umbrella that is finding its way into our conversations quite a bit here at school, because without that engagement and without that motivation, for whatever reason a student needs in order to be engaged and motivated, you're not gonna get very far with the academics piece and the social emotional wellness piece. So we're, we've been concentrating quite a bit on thinking about that. What does engagement and motivation look like? Are these students engaged? How do you know? How about these students? Are they engaged? Are they motivated? How do you know? How about these students? And then again, these students. I'm gonna bring us back to the very first picture we were looking at. It might be that you look at these students and you say, oh, look how engaged and motivated they're having this conversation, this small group conversation with their teacher. And the student is pointing out the, the, um, the piece at the top of the double helix and you might be thinking, oh, wow, look how engaged they are. And we don't know that this child didn't just finish telling a joke about the color red at the top of the, or this looks like the ladder that we climb in the, or, or what have you. Okay, so just by looking at this picture, we can't necessarily tell if these students are engaged and motivated. I mean, that could have just fallen apart and been put back together. You, we really don't know. They could be engaged in something that's happening there, but it might not be in learning. These particular students look like they're working together. They've got a computer in front of, in front of them, but then I'm gonna tell you they're watching um, a cartoon that they were able to, you know, for whatever reason, get onto. You know, we try to have firewalls for those things, but that's what they're doing. They're watching a cartoon that they found out, that they found online. So it could be deceiving. These students could look engaged and motivated, but may not be necessarily. And then these last two pictures, you think about you see some students here, they've got earphones in, they have an iPad, there's books all over the table, but they don't seem to be looking at those. They're all focused on the iPad. And then you've got two students here that are looking at their phones. Well, I might give you additional information that these students have read about something in there. They had a, they had a read, they had a goal to read something, watch something, and then write something. And so the students have already done the reading part and now they're engaging in the watch part and then they're gonna write. So they could very much be very engaged even though there's this piece of technology that's sitting in front of them that might suggest they were doing the same thing here. I'm also gonna tell you that these particular students, they're actually taking a survey. 
they're getting some data from uh, the teacher wants some data before they launch into their instruction and they're using their cell phones to respond with this two way, you know, instant data collection. So engagement and motivation, you need to think about how you're using tools and technology. You need to think about what engages a certain particular student. Um, there may have been another group of students that weren't watching this on an iPad. They might have been watching it up on a big screen because that's what's engaging and motivating to them. So you really thinking about what works for each student is important and how you know that they're engaged. You, you can't assume. you got to really take a look at at what's happening. Engagement could be sitting up straight, sitting in a desk, quiet in the room, taking notes in the moment, participating in a discussion. But it can also be music on in the background, standing at a table, conversations on topic or sometimes off. Students are able to actually work with both ways. I don't have don't say it too often, but they can. Doodling while listening is a big one. A student can be engaged in something somebody's saying and they're they're actually doodling at the same time. A follow-up email to a teacher could show engagement. I really liked our class today. It might not be participation in the middle of the class. So there's lots of different ways to think about engagement. And engagement leads to motivation. So does small steps of success. So does having a plan. So does growth mindset. But it all starts with engagement, engaging students in the process. Um, and and how, do we, how do we necessarily do that? So if it looks different for every student and we need to be open-minded to that, then how do we figure out if that student is, is motivated or engaged or what motivates them and engages them? We ask. We ask questions about what our students are doing in ways that we get answers. We ask open-ended questions like, how's it going? One day you may get something about social, another time you might get something about school, and you may be able to, depending on your student tech on how's it going in school. Um, Where's the best part of today? And then share yours as well. So engaging in a conversation that will get you to the answers you want without necessarily saying, I wanna know how it's going in math. How did you do on that test? Did you have a struggle today? Having conversations with our students is the best way to figure them out. It's the best way to have that relationship. It's that habit of mind of just being available and present to listen to what students have to say or children have to say to us. And then even better is they tell. Listen to the things your students say that you don't have to ask about. Then figure out why they are so excited and engaged in talking about those things. And you know it does happen. Students, kids come home from school and say, oh, you know what I did today? Or I had this interesting conversation with this teacher. Or I played with these blocks. Or I read this book. Or, um, you know, I had this conversation with a friend. Listen to those things. Because you can pick up ways they're becoming engaged and what works for them. And getting to know what you might suggest in a moment when they're having a hard time being engaged or motivated. How do we help students to be motivated and engaged? Well, I think we've talked about a lot of those things this year, and we've, I've vlogged about a lot of those things. Uh, we've already talked about growth mindset. This can help with persistence and grit. And if you didn't get a chance to watch that vlog, you should take a look at it. Uh, I will give you the, the one really powerful sentence out of there is, I do not have the skills for this yet. And really training your children and yourself to say that. Don't assume. We just talked about that. Ask questions and listen to answers. Set up a space and not every space will look the same. So ask for input. What does your learner need in order to feel like they have a space and somewhere to learn and be engaged? And it might be with music and it might be with a place to draw and it might be with a whiteboard and it might be with a notebook and it might be with a computer. Set a goal. Setting goals for your students that may, for your students, sorry, that makes sense and that's realistic. Um, for example, you might say to your child that's having a hard time producing work, let's see what you get done in 10 minutes. Or you might say, you know, a goal for today is that when you're feeling frustrated, take a break. That is gonna help your student get not get to that flipped lid part that we've talked about in the flipping lid vlog. Uh, so, you know, setting those goals and making, making sure that your student or your child um, is invested in what that goal is. Small goals, because small successes will help stu students feel motivated to keep going, which will lead to engagement. It's a back and forth relationship for sure. 
can this work outside of school when we want our children to be in, be motivated and engaged in other areas? I'm going to show you the same exact slide. Have a growth mindset. It does growth mindset is a transferable skill. It is not something that just pertains to academics and to school. Same thing. Don't assume. Ask questions. Listen to answers talking about soccer, you're talking about friends, you're talking about call it, going to college, oh good lord, you're talking about going to college, um, which is what we're doing in our house right now. Don't assume, ask questions, listen to answers. Set up a space, if it's for practicing for a sport, if it's for um, thinking about chores in your house, that's a big one, set up a space, set up a board with the chores on them, give them some choice. Um, setting up a space for something to happen or occur that you want to happen or occur is very, very important to be engaged and motivated. And it's clear expectations, right? So your your child knows what they're expected to do or expect how they're expected to perform, and they have a space in which to do it. Set a goal. All of these things work and can be transferred outside of school. And so the big takeaway is here, we're talking a lot about mindset and engagement and motivation is certainly a mindset. And there's different things that you can practice and do and establish as habits of mind in your daily life and in your work with your children and your families that will help you to do that, not just with academics, not just with at home learning and, and students learning virtually, which we're all doing at some point during the week, but with anything that you're really trying to work on and get them to do. So I hope this bit about engagement and motivation gives you a just a little bit of a slice of how you can start to approach understanding engagement and motivation and some tips and tricks for you to try at home. And I'm certainly looking forward to seeing your feedback from the vlog survey that went out today in News Bites and crafting some more vlogs that will help us to continue have this having this partnership. Thanks for watching and have a great weekend.